you must have heard about itgc controls in the past today we will be discussing what are itgc controls and what are the main focus areas of itgc very important video for all the uh, beginners i would say who are not at all aware about itgc please watch carefully and make notes guys very important information technology general controls called itgc it can be defined as internal control guys these are internal controls i'll explain internal controls later but for now just understand that these are the internal controls that are adopted by any organization okay why do we adopt so that we have secure stable and reliable performance of all the infrastructure that we have which includes the computer the hardware the software and it personnel also everybody who is involved and connected to the financial systems that's why itgc is important they involve the application controls as well and itgcs basically affect the ability for you to rely on application controls and it dependent manual controls also if you do not have itgc controls then you cannot rely upon any of the application controls guys unless otherwise because even these additional procedures that you would have if you do not have effective it gc controls uh, you cannot rely upon them so that's why it gc controls are integral part of many of the different operational and regulatory frameworks and audits including hipa assessments ssae 16 assessments pci reviews and audits sox assessments okay <coughs> sorry so now you must have known the importance of itgcs that's how much they are important about now as an individual i want to understand what are the main focus areas because only then i can prepare accordingly right if i do not know the boundaries of itgc then i would not be able to in a position to fulfill the requirements right so the first focus area is access to programs and data okay so here you need to identify controls that prevent inappropriate and unauthorized use of system across operating system database and applications how can you do that that is also being suggested through the use of security policies password policies providing proper user access provisioning role based access controls user access reviews physical security firewall as well as monitoring and making sure that there is no invalid login and monitoring the audit trails so these are some of the provisions to control access to programs and data <coughs> sorry similarly when you go ahead it also talks about program changes here you need to have some controls that involve authorization in terms of any change request review of those change requests approval documentation testing as well as assessment of all those changes on a test environment before you implement all those changes in the production environment this is what program changes talks about and how do you do that you have to create a change management process you have to follow the change management process for regular as well as emergency changes now this is very important that we usually follow the change management process for regular changes but i have seen in most of the organizations <coughs> that for emergency changes sometimes we are in so much of a rush that we forget this part and we try to make sure that the business processes are not affected at all because of any infrastructural change so usually we skip the emergency change procedures and approval processes guys please try to be cautious this is one practical advice that i am giving you on this platform and in this video never skip any change approvals always follow appropriate change process requirements okay 
be it even a critical change, be it a situation where you know that it will have a critical impact, still follow the process. Never leave the process. It's there for a reason, guys. Okay. So making sure that for program changes, any and all software related changes are being captured and even related to changes to OS database and application. <coughs> so second one, I think talks about mainly change management process, if I'm not wrong. And the first one talks about access management. Okay. Now let us look into the third one, program development. What is program development all about? This I think talks about, yes, I'm right. It's talking about software development life cycle, SDLC approach. So here in nutshell, I can tell you that it wants you to make sure that you include all the controls from the beginning of the software development life cycle process itself. <clears throat> so let me give you an example here, guys, because something comes to my mind whenever SDLC comes into uh, front of my eyes. So let's say there is a software and your software development team were working on it for last four years. And uh, now you have the launch in the upcoming one month. You have the launch date ready. Marketing is done. There is a huge hype around the software that the software team has developed. You are also very excited. But now somebody from your team asks that, you know, have we done the penetration testing or, you know, vulnerability testing on the application that we have developed? And the answer is no. Nobody did that. Somehow it got skipped. Somehow it was not included as a part of the program development project. So now when you hire a third party outsourcer or a third party vendor or a third party supplier, and when you ask them to perform this vulnerability testing and penetration testing, <coughs> you see that there are 15 bugs that you have to fix out of which five are critical and five are medium and five are low, but you have to fix the five critical ones. And when you check with the software development team, they say that in order to fix the five critical ones, they need at least a couple of months before that it is not at all remotely possible. So now you see the impact, you see the impact of not following these small areas of focus, which are being defined by ITGC. You now understand the kind of impact that the business can have. It is a catastrophic impact guys. That's why you have to have controls over development methodology. You have to make sure that this proper system design and implementation that is happening. You have to make sure that all the change management, you know, is happening throughout the program development. And there are checkpoints for security reviews, for vulnerability testings. Now in the similar scenario, if somebody would have tested the software after six months of implementation before the, uh, you know, launch, they could have easily identified those, those vulnerabilities and they would have ample of time to fix it. But nobody thought about that. Nobody considered that, I would say. So that's why these controls are very important. <coughs> Sorry. That's why these controls are very important. So I would highly request somebody who is watching right now in order to get the most value out of it. If you are a part of the software development team, I would highly encourage you to ask your project manager or the program manager to include somebody from the security team as well, who has proper knowledge and who can guide you how to follow appropriate frameworks for your SDLC process. After that, the fourth one is computer operations. And it is pretty much simple guys. Uh, it talks about taking backups, which is, I think, very important. And everybody who is in information security or cyber security is already aware about the importance and criticality <coughs> of having backups, restorations, and checking the restorations and scheduling the backups as well. Okay. <coughs> so I think the last one is pretty much simple. But I think now you must have got an understanding of ITGC areas of focus what ITGC talks about, what are the implications of not following the controls? Because we have taken some examples where we have understood the kind of catastrophical impact that it can have. 
I can take another example of access to programs and data as well if you want. Let's say, let's say there there is a financial system, ERP system, okay, and somebody who was working as a financial analyst, he got all the access and you know access control, you know access. Uh, <coughs> sorry. he got all the access and uh, you know permissions for the role that he was performing as a financial analyst but now after 5 years he has groomed into uh, let's say team lead finance team lead now and now his permissions and access controls have changed but now because somebody did not pay attention he has both kind of uh, permissions on his profile on his user profile now he has permissions of a system a financial analyst as well as of a finance team lead as well and even after 5 years if he is still a part of the company he becomes a manager finance manager again he has got a set of access but somehow he has still has the old financial analyst level access as well and if this happens this is again a big blunder guys and audit teams will find it out very easily it is the first thing that they look out for trust me okay so try to be cautious about all the controls that's why itgc is a very sensitive and critical topic that's why i wanted to create a video around this because i i had the thought that people would be having some doubts about itgc so i am really hopeful that this video will serve its purpose and you follow the controls properly if you have implemented in your organization thank you so much for watching take care bye bye